I was saying. Uh, thank you very much to be here uh, for the opportunity to see ETT and the Diputació for this super uh, opportunity to share with you with such a nice audience today. Uh, my mission today, my objective, I would say, is to share with you how the new technologies are impacting our economy and our life. How is that impacting in this great industry? The tourism, and uh, most important, how how we can best react to that uh, impact that we are having. My name is Caesar, uh, like Caesar Salad or Julius Caesar. That is a little bit more glamorous, as you prefer, but you don't forget. And, uh, and as he said, I'm working in IBM for 24 years. If you see that picture. I think that you can feel something, you can feel excited or you can feel fear, I don't know. But this is what is happening nowadays. This is what is happening nowadays in our life. This is what is happening nowadays with the technology impacting our economy, our business model and everything. This is so big as you can see that, so fast as you can see that. So let's understand if we are prepared to serve and to survive to that way. The content of today, I've structured in three, in three pillars. First of all, I would love to share with you what is happening, why we need to be ready. Secondly, I would love to, to explain to you uh, how we can use the new technology, meaning the, the tools and to take your lessons to, to serve uh, by that wave. And third, I would love to share with you the reality meaning which are the champions who are doing uh, that, which are the experience that we are having in this industry. So some companies are already playing and successful uh, with this new technology. Right now, I need you to, to make a reflection because what is happening right now never ever happened before. I mean, the impact of the technology and everything that all the things that you can do today as a as a as a as a person or as meaning as a customer or as a company you can do things that you never ever think about that is like magic meaning the impact that we are having today in the economy and in the business model the only similar thing that would you can compare is the the first industrial revolution in uh, 18th century after that, many things happen, like for instance, you know, internet, e-commerce, the mobile. These are really very, very big changes in the society and in the economy and in the technology. But never ever the new technologies like nowadays uh, AI, artificial intelligence, internet of things, blockchain, are impacted in such a manner. Why is that? Because of two reasons, mainly the data, and the way we treat the data, meaning the data. You know, guys, that it's all about the data. I mean, technology is supporting everything, but it's all about the data that we have today to manage and to understand. There is a, an information very important, for very impressive, I would say. Nowadays, there are more SIMI, SIM card, SIM, plus card SIM, there are more number in the world than the population of the world. There are more than each of us. This is really amazing because the world is very big. There are many kinds of people, poor, rich, very poor, but still the human being, us, we are able to have more than one for each of them. So that's amazing. So let's imagine the number of data that every second is being created. It's really you cannot really think about that, it's unbelievable. So this is a first data, a first data to understand what is happening, the information, and secondly, the way you can treat this information. In the old days, old days, nowadays is before 2012, uh, the data that you can manage and understand is the abstract, uh, structured data. Every data that you can put in an X file, you put your name, your data, where you're from, you're male, female, whatever, and you work very quickly and fantastically with this data. But nowadays, based on the new technologies, 
you can manage, you can understand, and you can leverage data like the voice, the emotions, the feelings, the, the image, the pictures, and even the smell. Some companies are already uh, working with the smell in order to identify data. So when you put together the number of data that we have, that is <laughs> unbelievable, and the way we can treat that data, this is, this is something that is really happening right now. So my question, I need each of us to reflect if you are having a big company, a small company, or a medium company, if you are really thinking what is happening to your company, how is impacting that to your company, what is going to happen to your company in the coming year. I'm going to tell you something very, very also impressive. You know the, the, the Fortune list companies in the United States, there are the 500 top companies every year, they put that in a list based on the revenue. In the last two decades, in less than 60 years, 90% of these companies have disappeared. This is <laughs> unbelievable. So this is another uh, data about how fast everything is moving. Why those companies disappear? Is that because they didn't work enough? I don't think so. Is that because they were not uh, smart enough or they were too, too hard or too soft or they were centralized or not centralized? It's nothing about that. It's because they didn't see the wave and they didn't see how everything is moving and they didn't re uh, react on that. So that's why all of us everywhere we are, list we are, we are talking about digitalization this is true and this is a word that is here and is going to be here for a long time. Digitalization is the way you put in digital, you treat in digital your data, your process, your relation with the people. So it's all about that, that's cool, that's great. Digital transformation is also very good because you need to start moving and to think how your process needs to be in digital. But it's, I invite you today to think a little bit more and to start doing the digital reinvention. I mean, even you have all the technology, even you have all the data, if you don't think about your business model, uh, maybe you are not going to survive to that way. You can see that in every day in the sector, in our life, you see Airbnb, how it's attacking in the, in the tourism. You can see Cabify, Uber, all that companies are, is, are using technology to reinvent themselves and they are putting in high risk any other more traditional model. So it's all about to reinvent yourself. For instance, brainstorming for the hotels, hospitality. I came here to Barcelona yesterday at 8 p.m. and I, leave, I left my room at 8 a.m. Why I need to pay one day if I stay, I don't know, 10 hours? I mean, why do, don't they start to do room as a service? So you pay for the 10 you stay. Why the hotels, are not, they don't use the lobby to make parties, to invite the people, such a nice places. I don't, I don't think, I don't know if it is right or wrong. I mean, it's something about to, to open your mind and, uh, and to start thinking about how to do the things different. And this is how the technology is here to help us to do so. I love that picture. This is Manhattan Fifth Avenue. And you can see here all about horse career, okay? And there is one car there, just one car. Less than 30 years later, same street is happened something like that. <laughs> I mean, this is the, the beginning of 19th century. So all is about car and just one horse career. I mean, this is really impressive and this is happening right now in front of us to many of our business. So it's all about to make, to open your minds and to make the things a little bit different. I love next video to do the things different. No? Tanisla, do you have that? You need to play, to put play. Ah, okay. <laughs> Fantastic. Do the things in a different way. 
simple, easy. Uh, I love that picture because of many reasons. First of all, because these are my kids. I have six kids. Secondly, <laughs> I'm also impressed. Eh? <laughs> Secondly, because all the things, if we still don't see how the technology is impacting and what is going on to us, uh, let's think about the, uh, the future customer, the, the, digital, the digital native people. My kids, I was having a very nice breakfast with the team here, and we were laughing because my kids are all day long, come on, daddy, and you work for IBM, come on. Because <laughs> any time I try to make, do a, a complex thing through internet, sometimes I cannot do it, and they can because they are millennial, so the, their mind is structured in a different way. So all the work that we are doing today, each of us, are for that generation. So we really need to open our mind and to think. Also, uh, in order to reinvent yourself, I'm, I was introduced, I was working 24 years for IBM, so I feel reinvent myself many times. I've been in procurement, in sales, in uh, business operation, in international. I need to reinvent myself every day, first of all, to be happy in my job, and secondly, to continue giving value. So I also need to reinvent myself every day with my kids to connect with each of them. So they are helping me a lot to do so. Let's focus a little bit about uh, our industry. Let me share with you formal data. Okay, so all what I'm saying that you can think, okay, it's IBM, same technology, blah, blah, blah. But no, this is pure, tr is, is pure reality. This is data from the World Economic Forum and this diagram is about all the drivers that are impacting the economy and the business. And you can see here that you see some technology, but still you see uh, demographics, uh, middle class, geopolitical things impacting the economy, so it's okay. In the previous years, more, uh, more technology, Internet of Things, 3D printing, but still some any other factors or driving impact in the economy, like um, women's economy power, uh, like new consumer ethics, the privacy. But nowadays, what is saying the World Economic Forum is that in the coming years, what is impacting the economy is all about technology. It's all about robotic, artificial intelligence, and biotechnology. I mean, very formal institution, <laughs> I fully agree about the impact of the technology. Let's move on about our industry. You said that in the introduction, uh, in Spain, the opportunity is really huge. You know, guys, that we are the second most popular destiny in the world. When the people want to travel, first of all, they want to go to Paris. Okay, we understand. We forgive the French people for that. But second, they want to come to Spain to come over. So the impact of the tourism in the GDP, in the national economy, is bigger than the average. So our impact is really huge, meaning there is a big opportunity of business in this sector in Spain, and this is affecting to all of the company. When you put all that together, we talk about technology, it's very important, and the tourism is very important. We cross the data, and this is, again, the World Economic Forum is saying, what is going to happen? in our industry in the coming years. They are saying the three main factors impacting the business are going to do artificial intelligence. Why is that? Because nowadays it's all about you can do everything yourself. I mean, none of you, especially the young people, none of you think to go to visit to a travel agency to design your travel. You laugh at me, oh, come on, are you, are, you, are you sure? Are you, are you kidding? Am I going to go to a to a travel agency for them to design my travel. I can access to everywhere I, I, I want. And with the artificial intelligence, the web is going to, to, to let me know which are my preference. My preference. Secondly, it's about a no filter experience, the virtual reality. This is not still here in Spain very uh, strong, but it's coming like a wave as well. And the third is about security and trust. And the new technology blockchain is going to impact in this, uh, in this area of business. Uh, I think I've explained a little what's going on, no? The ocean, what we, what we see, what is going to happen if we are starting to surf and the wave is coming with such a big uh, 
power that we need to be prepared. How to be prepared? First of all, artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is very complex thing in, in, in a technology point of view, but it's very simple to understand. Artificial intelligence is when you give a machine the capacities of a, of a human, meaning you teach them to learn, to solve problems, to, to, to fix, uh, to take decisions, all these kind of things. And you can do that by two main devices, machine learning. Machine learning, the best way to understand is when you play chess, the chess game, you load in a machine all the, all the successful chess, uh, move, chess movement, no? You load that and you teach the machine to evolve and to think about any other movements. So the machine is learning continuously, so you can play chess in a very smart way. This is the, the way it works, the machine learning. Obviously, it's based with a static, a statistical models, and you need to put a lot of info to learn. No? The, the machine needs to learn to start thinking by itself. And the second thing is about the deep learning. The deep learning is a, a complex way to operate based in new, neural network. And the best way to understand is if you load tons, thousands and millions of pictures of different people and you say this is black, this is white, this is a female, this is from uh, Barcelona, from Madrid, from Spain, from that, and you put your own picture, the deep learning is going to tell you, okay, you are uh, white, you are male, you have around 50 years, you are this kind of thing, no? It's really learning. When you put together the machine learning and the deep learning, you create the artificial intelligence that is going to help you in many ways. How can help us the, the artificial intelligence? There are three, three types of arti artificial intelligence. I have, I'm taking here the, the classification by Harvard Business Review that we obviously fully agree. There are three different kinds. Uh, the first of all is the robotic, and it's very simple to understand. It's the, the way you treat the data in a very uh, faster way, very related to, to, to manage the files, the, the back office, the, the fast that you can do your queries. The second is about to understand your customer, so you can predict what is going to happen. You can, let's think about Inditex, when they are going to launch a, a brand new bag or a brand new shoot or something, they know everything about what is going to like the customer in the future because of artificial intelligence. So it's the way you know your customer. And the third way to apply artificial intelligence is the way you interact with your customer. That is the, the much more cool, no? Is when you can talk to a machine, when you a chatbot. So these are the three ways how they can help us in our tourism industry, very obvious. When you know your customer, you know your customer knowledge. If you know your customer based on artificial intelligence, you can offer to the customer all the time their best options. You can interact with your customer, you know their preferences, you can create new, uh, new products. For the employees, you are going to help your employees because you are going to give them a lot of power to interact with the customer. I think that artificial intelligence is, is like the energy is not created or destroyed with the, with, with the work, but the, it, it, it's helping to transform the job. So if you have a guy doing a very boring work, you give them intelligent artificial and they can start working in a very, very much better work. And the last part of the, of the business value is as you automate, you are, if you put automatization, you are going to be more productive because you are going to do the things much more faster. What is, what is happening? What is the reaction of the market right now? The companies are using much more uh, the first option, the robotics. Nowadays, it's very easy to understand as well because is having the less impact in the people, is the less risky. So you don't, you saying, okay, let's try this artificial intelligence, but not with direct contact with the customer. So you use that to, to do your, your processes. Uh, why are they uh, doing the artificial intelligence? Mainly it's because they want to, 
to impact the customer experience. They want to be more, more productive and more easy to access to the customer. And the challenges nowadays of the artificial intelligence is how to integrate that with your system. This is a big challenge. So you can have tons of ideas and big dreams, but if you are not digital enough, uh, you cannot apply that. And so this is the big problem that we are having. So that's why we were before talking about the digital transformation. IBM and artificial intelligence. Uh, we are, in IBM, we are talking artificial intelligence is nothing new. We are talking about that since uh, 18, uh, 1986 because uh, an IBM machine with artificial intelligence was the f uh, were able to win a chess game to Kasparov at this time and it was a very big media impact because doing machine learning and as I explained you before, we, we were able to, to, to beat the, the big guy in chess. That was unbelievable. The second big impact, it was uh, in 2011 that IBM participates in Jeopardy. Je Jeopardy is like, uh, is the most popular uh, concurso game in the States of our uh, answers and questions but not direct in a, with double sense, with a slang, with funny things, uh, referring to any other things. I mean, you need to think a little to answer. And IBM was the winner against the very big champions of that game today. So this is also based in machine learning, but nowadays the things that you can do with uh, artificial intelligence is really un un unbelievable. I'm going to show you a video about one of our campaigns interacting with the customer and social media with intelligent art artificial, artificial intelligence. I don't know if you know the series of the, the Jean Paul. His Holiness Pius 13, and he has his own series on Canal Plus, the young Pope. Different, unconventional, iconoclast, he decided to show the world how modern he is, not by shouting it from the balcony of the Vatican, but rather on social networks, by addressing in particular the millions of sinners to be found there, and by replying to each of their posts in real time with witty answers and quoting only the Bible. Esto está respondido por una máquina todo. Love each other in the same way that I have. Entonces durante dos horas se puso en marcha esto. Como Twitter está abierto, pues cuando detectaba algo, digamos, irre, ir, irreverente un poquito, pues contestaba. Con, con una frase del Jean Paul, que es la serie, y, pro, y, y promocionaba esta serie, ¿no? But when you give a feast, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind. Luke 14, 13. Flagrant fall on Ronaldo. Is they very fucking blind? Be silent and I will teach you... Let's imagine that you apply that for a new hotel, a new campaign to go to the snow or something, and you put that in during two, three hours, that you can interact with the whole country in a funny way. Practical. When you're dealing with millions of people. One million replies generated by our artificial intelligence. Four million people reached. The best launch for a series in France. Not bad, right? Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. Ecclesiastes 12.8. So in that, in that uh, campaign, you can see everything, you know? How you interact, how quickly you are, how you can reach the people. Blockchain. Uh, we may need one whole day to, uh, to, to, to go through blockchain, but let me give you only the, the, the big message here. Blockchain is a new way to, to do business. We think from IBM, we think that blockchain is going to impact the, 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 the business like internet impacted the communication at that time, so it's really big. And it's all about the trust. It's just to create a common database where only the, the, the players that you authorize in that ecosystem can change information or materials. 
so you can follow the traceability of the transaction in a very secure place. You cannot do any change. So let's, for instance, uh, let's understand uh, with a real example. Since last Monday in Carrefour, if you go there and you buy uh, a piece of chicken, you can make a picture of the chicken and you can see where the chicken come from when the chicken left the farm or for whatever and the time that it spent until getting Carrefour. You can do that with the wine, with the fish. Can you imagine for Danisaki? I mean, it should be unbelievable. No, no, it's a, a really, a really uh, solve of many problems. So it's time saving, it's cost saving, cost saving, sorry, and it's eliminating all the intermediaries. Okay, so this is going to, to happen. It's still not 100% implemented because it's a little bit complex technologically to, to connect that because you really need to be a digital company to be able to enter in a blockchain, but this is one of the big waves to come. Let me finish with SARF champions. Let's go together to some more reference uh, in our industry about how the new technologies are impacting. The new technologies can impact in the customer journey by the very first way when you are looking for a, for a travel. You don't go to a travel agency, you go to the web. I will show you a very nice example. When you are in the room, I'm going to show you what you can do with an intelligent room. And after the travel, how the companies can go back to you again to offer you a new travel with them. First video is about a, a unique experience in the room of the hotel, putting all that together. Uh, artificial intelligence, internet of things, and everything. It's all about the customer experience. Good evening, Mr. Sui. Hello, Watson. Welcome back to our hotel. Do let us know if we can make your stay more comfortable. Every hotelier wants their guests to have a tip-top experience. That's where Watson Assistant comes in. You can name yours to represent your brand. I see your flight was late arriving. Would you like me to order you room service? Yes, please. Starving. Would you like your usual order, or may I suggest some options from the menu? Uh, my usual order, please. Great. It will arrive in 20 minutes. Thank you. Personalization is a must-have. You need to integrate your loyalty programs and services with the calendars, itineraries, and preferences of your guests. Thank you. Good thing Watson Assistant is connected to a large global ecosystem of skills and applications to make those personal experiences a reality. Sir, the last time you stayed with us, you asked me to check up on your home. So all this mechanism is about a customer experience. He's really focused to make that guy happy because you know him. You keep his data from any other visits. So you know that he's going to go to the gym, that he likes fat milk or milk or, or vegetables, so he's vegan or whatever. And uh, you can offer him continuously all these kind of things. But the other very good thing for the company is that you are loading all the info from the customer so you know more or less what an average guy of 50 traveling businessman what he preferred so you can start creating experiences for the for the future that's perfect thanks your guests are busy people imagine if you could streamline their schedules they'd never want to leave Watson, what time is breakfast? Our continental breakfast begins at 6.30 a.m. As a Platinum member, you have access to the full-service breakfast in our executive club. See, if you anticipate what your guests like, you can offer more services, but you need the right date first. Are you ready to bring your brand to life? Because that's
that something worth dreaming about? So uh, this is going to happen, and I think a little bit more faster than we think that is going to happen. So we better get ready for this kind of things. What is very important for IBM is they are doing very nicely. That is all the data that you are getting from your customer. In IBM, you just use that with your customer. Meaning, if I go to NH and I do that, the data of the customers in the hotel are going to be used only by NH. It's not like any other company that they use that data to do marketing. So when you go home and you stay in your kitchen, going to internet, you start to, to see tons of advertisement that they can send you because you were in the hotel and they notice that you like whatever. This is not happening with IBM. This is very important because we treat the data only for the purpose of the hotel or the company. That's a big differentiation that is going to help us a lot in the future because still there is a gray line in the treatment of the data, but tons of sanctions and many things are going to happen. But this is completely uh, sure for IBM. Wayblazer. Wayblazer is an intelligent web. This is a, a, a travel company that you go into the web and you start talking and writing and interacting with the web in a very human way. So if you have load to the web that you are, in my case, for I like surf, I have six kids, I like beach, whatever, they directly will start to offer to me my best offer. You can, all that, you can try that in the web yourself, so very nice. This is for the airlines. They are using uh, logarithms and artificial intelligence to offer to the customer the best offer and the best price. So they know your habits, they know how you fly, they know what do you like, if you like to be uh, by the window, in the corridor, whatever. They know the seasons where you travel, so they are going, uh, artificial intelligence is going to be able to give to the airlines the opportunity to send to you the very best offer to you through complex uh, logarithms, this kind of thing. This is very, very, this is my last video and it's impressive, it's a, sm a smart destination. So you go to that uh, golf club in LA and you can uh, start having the very best experience as a customer with a pure, as I told you, a smart destination. So no, the previous one, there should be a video. No, there is no video. I showed the video before. No, no, this is this is about blockchain, the previous one. No, if you click down the slide, no? Down, go down the slide. Enrique, don't go down, 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 down. You should is there a bar there? Okay. Where's a good Thank place you. for lunch? We have sit down your takeaway options. Which would you like? So you go there and you start talking with your destiny. That allows guests to interact either through audio or through a text message like feature. And so Watson can suggest dining, shopping, and drinking destinations. We have a great uh, partnership going with Pebble Beach. And Pebble Beach is an amazing golf resort in Northern California. They own 17 Mile Drive, which is a beautiful drive along the coast. Today, if you go to 17 Mile Drive, you'll get handed a paper map. We want to bring them into the you know, modern age. When the Pebble Beach Company approached IBM, they were trying to figure out how to take digital experiences and create them in a way that was a natural extension of their already casually elegant guest services program. Part of what IBM is bringing to the table is cognitive tools like Watson, but also just a understanding of users and how guests behave and making technologies that make a natural fit for a resort environment. We have about 1.5 million visitors coming to the forest every year. Those are not just our hotel and golf guests, but these are people who are making a trip to California. They tend to drive up and down the coast and they make a stop in Pebble Beach. We really don't know very much about those guests at all. 
So our ability to capture some more information about them is going to be very helpful to us to try to understand what they're really looking for. So the ability to push a marketing offer to those 1.5 million visitors that are coming in every year, we think that's going to drive more business for us. The Pebble Beach app with Watson has audio tours. If you drive along 17 mile drive, there's points of interest signs that will tell you about each place that you're passing. Another feature we're really excited about in the app is the Explore the Resort feature. It's really going to drive customers to where the hotspots are, where the trends are, what's happening right now as far as menus, what's fresh on the menus, and of course the insider tips. I've really enjoyed working with Watson, training Watson. It's been really cool to see him get smarter. We want to partner with, with a company that's best in class. The opportunity to partner with IBM and to create an app and look for other types of technology solutions to help us improve that customer service that's what really makes the partnership. Okay, so again, it's all about the same thing. It's all about the data. So what is really amazing is that the, the resort is having the data of one of each of the 1.5 million people that are visiting that every year. Any other, thing, any other case to do that is impossible, but through this kind of ap application, they can do that. And on top of that, and most important, customer experience. I mean, you are all the time tr trying to make the customer a little bit more happy, giving them, him or her, what they need all the time. Blockchain, I'm going to Blockchain skip that function. video because of time. But uh, I wanted to show you the, 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 the business cases in blockchain for the tourism. We were talking before in the breakfast about the loyalty program. So the loyalty programs are very, very important programs for the, for the hotels because they need to, to create loyalty, loyalty with the people in that program. So through blockchain, they can extend very nicely and very easily the ecosystem and the players in the loyalty program in a very secure way. The food supply, that is like I'm, I told you, the fraud, there are uh, many, many people that, tons of people, 50% of the loss of a hotel is based on people that they don't pay. You believe or you don't believe that. They, they, they make tons of uh, strange things with the cars. They lie with their I identity. So blockchain is coming here to fix all that, all that travel because you can establish a, a payment way very secure. So all the things are going to be happening and change with blockchain, so it's a technology that is going to be in our life very soon. This is my very last <coughs> slide. So if you think that you really want to jump, that you are convinced enough, that you really need to move on and to start exploring new technologies, meaning how artificial intelligence, how blockchain, how security, how Internet of Things are going to help your business and you to to, to serve and to do a safe jump, you really need to be aware that you need to start talking with a partner with vision, with technology, and very important, with experience, with real cases. Because nowadays, all of us are talking about everything, that we can do everything, so you can ask, show me what you are doing, show me your customers, show me your reference, and I will think about that. And my very late, latest and humble ad advice is you need to think big, I mean, you really need to think extraordinary things. Each of you can do extraordinary things. Nowadays, with the technology, just with the access to a web, you can build a startup and you can change the world. I mean, with the new technology, you can really do the difference. You can be very big, each of you. So think big. <coughs> Don't put barriers about what you can do, because nowadays, with the technology, you can do everything. You can change any business model, again. You can invent a new Cabify, you can invent a new Airbnb, a new Alibaba, whatever. S start small, I mean, don't lose all your money, don't do a big investment because maybe you fail. I mean, it's also very risky. So start small, but think about a solution that you can escalate, scale very fast. And I'm sure you will su success. So thank you very much.
you. Okay. Thank you so much, Cesar. Is there any question? Remember that you can use the app. Your questions will appear here, right in the screen. Or if not, we can use also the, the micros. Any questions? Question? I was super clear, no? <laughs> no questions. OK, so nice to meet you. You have my data in LinkedIn, in, in, in ah, everywhere. So we have questions. Yes, sir, we okay, have, we question have a there. question. Micro. Uh, micro. Thank you, it's a very amazing presentation. I, I would just like, my, we are today at the big data area, as you said, and we have a uh, uh, many type of uh, kinds of data, you know, we said uh, text, image, uh, sound, etc. How, for example, in IBM, you can try to homogenize this, all of this data? This is my first question. And the second one, uh, is this something, for, is, for example, when you speak about Blockchain, intelligent artificial is something accessible to the smart uh, to the small businesses in terms of cost. Okay, uh, very smart questions. By the way, first question is about this is this what you said is a problem that m tons of very very intelligent and big companies are having. Meaning, they are investing a lot in order to get data from customers and they have tons of data and they don't know what to do with that data. If that's true, eh? I'm not talking about startups, I'm talking about big hotels, company, many things. Okay, so this is all about <coughs> data analytics. So within IBM and within all the technologies, in, uh, on top of uh, artificial intelligence to get data, whatever, there are, uh, I mean, there are piece of artificial intelligence that you can apply to organize and to understand your data. This is all about data analytics. Uh, it's not the content for today, but we have also tons of very nice examples about we can predict uh, customer behaviors and tons of things based on the data that we have. So you can contact me and I can send you tons of examples and you can talk with the CSER in charge of data analytics and you can be very surprised. The second question is also very, I love that you asked me in this forum. Our technology is, uh, is open to each of you. We have very nice startups programs, very nice that you don't really need to pay a euro, that if we understand your, pro your project and we understand that you are doing something innovative, I mean, I'm not talking about a Nobel Prize or something, I mean, something that we can see that you want to move on, we give you access to our technology. So you can, you can prove yourself and you can test our blockchain, our artificial intelligence. There is a program on that. This is very quickly, because this is one of the very big things that is happening with the technology. It's quickly, so you switch on and you can start playing and testing the application. So if you can contact me, I can give you all that access. And the same thing, guys, for all of you. Whatever, each of you, can play, there are tons of tests open in the web with, the, with Watson. I mean, Watson is the name of the founder of IBM. That's why we call our artificial intelligence with Watson. If you go that, you can already start talking to Watson. You can describe a situation and Watson can tell you if you are happy, sad, uh, many things about your personality. This is open for you. I mean, you can web that, it's open for each of you. Cesar, you have? Questions on the screen? First one, which difference would have IBM AI than Alexa or Google AI? Okay. Uh, there are some difference, no? I can going to tell you. First of all, uh, as I told you, Google and Alexa are using the data that you load. They are using that for market purpose. <coughs> so when you say, I agree, you agree that all your habits, all the information that you are putting in that machines, they can, that it's good because, I, I mean, you know if it's good or bad, but it's okay because you say, I accept. So they can use all that access to make any other uh, services for any other customers. Uh, so that's okay uh, because you accept that, but this is something that you need to know. 
it's not the case in IBM. In IBM, when you use Watson, all the data is just for you and Watson, and that's all. Second is that uh, IBM is a white brand, Marca Blanca, meaning that when you put Watson in your house or in your in your hotel, you don't say, hi Alexa, hi Google, you say, hi NH, how, hi Melia, hi whatever, so you can name and personalize. Another, another big difference that we have is that we are a technology company oriented to the industry, not to the, not really to the, <coughs> to the, to the, to the uh, only customer, meaning you saw in the example of the intelligent uh, room that the guy from the room, he was able to switch on and off the, um, the, the temperature in su casa. So the, the air condition in everything. This is because of Internet of Things. So IBM and Watson is connected to a very big platform of Internet of Things. So as you load Watson and you start working with him, you can do tons of things that you cannot do with, a, with another simple um, assistant. No? And on top of that, uh, these kind of uh, assistants that are great, eh? I love them, they are very funny, they are very useful, but they have a limited uh, capabilities. They are, tra they are trained to do what you have learned them to, to do. Meaning, Watson is continuous learning, and the you buy a Watson with a certain scope, and the scope is the heaven. I mean, you can teach him to do tons of things. Uh, um, I don't. We don't have a lot of time, so I think we are going to move on to the third question because I think the second one you have put a lot of examples the, of application of intelligent artificial um, in, in um, artificial intelligence in rooms. But what do you think about? Um, how can companies How can be, ready? be ready? Okay, I told you before. So the new technologies are not going here to destroy employee. So they are not doing useless what you know. I mean, each of you, I don't know if you know about uh, business, about technology, about tourism, about mathematics, I don't know. So intelligent artificial and new technologies are not going to destroy your job, but you need to be aware that you are uh, updated about what you can do and how to, to leverage the new technologies. So it's very, very important nowadays uh, to be updated and to never stop to learn and to study and to be sure that you know everything about all that you can do with new technologies. Because what is going to happen is that this is true, the repetitive works, the boring one, the no value add jobs are going to disappear. But this is not bad. We don't want a person to do a boring job pressing a button all the time or just no, just no answering. This guy is going to be able to do a great things, understanding the customer and doing any other things, but you need to be updated in your education. So that's why the careers are also changing and you are going to see more and more how the universities and the academies are offering um, new ways to be updated with new new topics and new and new contents. Uh, I think we are out of time. There are two really good questions here, but um, I think you will stay for the coffee break. Maybe yeah, yeah, you sure, can attack sure. him and ask wherever I have you my want. My cards here. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, Cesar, for your.